Okay, Lorelei Splendorhelm. I've seen a lot of comments about this. I made my original review, and the takeaway from that is it's strong. It was very, very strong. Forget about that review. It got reworked. And I believe that it's on the same level, and in a lot of ways, it's better. For one thing, I'm not going to accept that this is a bad helmet at all. It is really, really good. You're going to be seeing that in the gameplay. You can't look at what you're seeing, what you're able to do, and say that. I'm sorry. It's okay to have a strong opinion on it. You don't have to use it. That's fine. However, when you break down the strengths and weaknesses, the numbers work out. I'm going to talk about those. Because there's so many things going on around this thing, and I just don't understand it. I do understand the reason why people don't like it, but it's not a big deal. It works out better than you think. It's comparable to a lot of things in the game. I'm going to go over that. Now, that's the key word, though. Rework. In my mind, I don't necessarily view this as a nerf at all. Because remember Sanguine Alchemy? While hacks with a rift, it got reworked. It does something completely different than what it originally did. And that's a good example of a bad rework. And with the Splendor Helm rework, I'm going to show you the numbers, what you're now getting out of it. Because those numbers are important. And the numbers check out. If the helmet never existed, if its original form that we saw with the Witch Queen release was never made, no one knew what it did. Instead, this was the version that we've only ever known about, and then it came out, players would be all over it. But since players see the change on how it worked from where it was before to now, they're tossing it aside. Which, the way that it worked before was free. It was very, very free. They reworked that. So that was a little pre-game before I get in depth. I'm not here to convince you, like not at all. I'm here to show you. I do think it's very, very good. So much so that when I run Titan and Trials this weekend, I'm gonna be using this helmet. With what you can do with it, there's no way you can call this thing terrible or bad. And if you do, I think that you're missing out. You're your own worst enemy in the situation. It's your call. But if the things that I'm getting ready to go over happen to you at some point, I know you're gonna have to throw some respect down on it because this thing will get you and there's nothing you can really do about it. Cauterizing Flame, your sunspots heal you. When you're critically wounded with full class ability energy or when you cast your barricade, create a sunspot at your location. First things first, the cooldowns. The cooldowns play a huge part. So when you're running this helmet, I highly encourage you to have 100 resilience for the fastest barricade possible, and then pair that with double utility kickstart on your class item. That's gonna be on stasis. When your class ability energy is fully expended, you gain class ability energy. And I've seen some things already in some of my replies, like, oh, you need to build into max resilience. Well, if you're playing Titan, you should be doing that. You need to utilize the barricade. Secondarily, with how the Crucible plays out, a lot of people next go straight to recovery. So you're not really changing what you normally do, because a lot of the issue with certain things in the game is that they are very, very strong. Atherus's Embrace, one-shot throwing knives. Controverse Hold, very, very strong. But for all of these to work, you need to build into them. You need max 100 discipline for the Controverse Hold. You need max 100 strength for the throwing knife. That's where a lot of people get lost in this game, because the things that are effective are free. Stompy steps and dunes don't require you to build into anything. And these don't either. Your character should always have high class ability energy, high recovery. That doesn't change here. For the Titan Towering Barricade, at tier 10, it has a cooldown of 16 seconds. If you have double kickstart, it's 14 seconds. And a big part of wrapping all this together is Sun Warrior. Passing through a sunspot causes your grenade and melee abilities to recharge faster, your super to last longer. It also increases your damage that your weapons deal, 20% more damage. Then there's the Rally Barricade. Its base cooldown is 13 seconds. With double kickstart, it's 11. And keeping in mind, you can pop that barricade and stay within your sunspot for the constant healing and the damage buff. There's a second part of this that I'm gonna cover on when you're in critical health. This barricade, with its rework, they fixed it. They did change it to where it does not take your class ability when you die. So if you were to get three tapped by a hand cannon, hit by a sniper, whatever it is, it doesn't take your class ability. So what they did is that when you're in critical health, there's like a half second, almost full second of when it decides to drop your barricade. And this is what a lot of people have issues with. I've seen it everywhere. Some of the comments on Twitter, things like being punished with your barricade for dipping into a red bar is a big no. It takes the fun factor out of it. I don't like my barricade getting taken away in critical health. The helmet isn't worth using at the risk of the utility of the barricade pop. Cool guy, it doesn't bother you that it takes away your class ability without you having any control? I don't think so. With the recent nerfs to the helmet, it made the nerfs to sunspots unnecessary now. Now, I do agree with that part. So, something you need to remember about how these cooldowns are working. Because the other part of this is it dropping your barricade. Whenever it drops your barricade, you immediately get Sun Warrior. If you were to ever just get tapped passing through a lane, say by a sniper, say you're taking shots, it drops a sunspot. It's giving you a little bit of health. And in a lot of these situations, a hunter main would have dodged. If I had a dollar for every time a hunter, including myself playing hunter, either had an unnecessary dodge for a cool factor, or B, got into a duel in the middle of nowhere and then dodged out of the way, it's kind of the same thing. But with Sun Warrior, I kind of view it like that. 
It's kind of like I just burned a dodge. A lot of people are like, well, you lose your utility of the barricade. But between Kickstart and with what you're able to do with this thing, it's what we like to call a trade-off. The first game I played with this, I had a We Ran Out of Metals. You get this barricade back faster than both Hunter dodges. And in the worst case scenario, is that you get critical enough to drop the barricade and die. But when you spawn back up, it's only gonna be 10 to 13 seconds before you get it back. And think about Midtown, think about all these maps. By the time that you reach your first fight, it's either gonna be there or two seconds off. And in a lot of this gameplay, I am popping barricade after barricade after barricade because the new important thing about this exotic is the 20% damage on demand. I don't care who you are or what you think about it. If I'm in trials and I have an on-demand empowering rift essentially that I can be mobile with and I pop it at the beginning of a round and tap you with an Ariana's Vow, body shot you with a Lorenz Driver, do you think that that's bad? I don't think so. And in a lot of these clips, you're playing the Sunspot playstyle. When you play Sun Warrior, it is Sunspot to Sunspot to Sunspot, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And if I don't have a Sunspot, I create it myself. And in a lot of cases, even when that barricade is dropped because someone got me critical, I usually can't move anyway. So I'm slowly getting back health, then the recovery kicks in, and in that time frame, I have 20% more damage. It kind of has a Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves effect to it. And in no time, by the time you get in your next duel, you have the barricade. And if you really want to get things going, you would run the Rally Barricade, because the Rally Barricade can be 10-11 seconds. It's just sunspot to sunspot, area to area. And I've used things like Suros, Lorenz Driver. Ace of Spades is the best one, because imagine this. And you've seen it. That, that was the first game that I had my we ran out of medals with. You win a duel and, and you pocket Memento Mori. I can set up in the next lane or the next area and just sit in my sunspot after I pop that barricade. Then I can just infinitely two-tap at that point. There is not a bad thing to say about this, guys. It's it's good. It is strong. Like you saw in the opening clip, it just takes one down. And as long as you're landing shots, everybody's getting two-tapped. That is a benefit. That is a trade-off. If I'm able to do this and be in control of it, it's elite. But a downside is that every now and again, that barricade's going to get dropped when I'm in critical health. I can accept that. That's fine. Because when it comes to things like Trials of Osiris, it's going to be back before we engage in the next round. It's going to be back when I need it. And then I use it offensively as it's now intended to be. This is an offensive exotic. So no, this thing's incredible now. Like in some ways, like I said, it's a little bit better than where it was. Because before, all you were really doing and where it really benefited was that it would drop that sunspot when you're in critical health. So it was a free sunspot. So in a duel, it shifted a lot of TTKs. Like with the 140 hand cannon, you get two heads and then a body shot because Sun Warrior pops up. The entire concept was around somebody getting you in low health. That is still there. And I'm sorry that it's going to take about 11, 12 seconds to get back your barricade. But in turn, you're using this barricade all the time with 20% more damage. Not going to say that it's bad. You can do incredible things with it. The most important part of the video, what you need to take away, the numbers are fine. You get a fast barricade back. If it gets popped, it's like you're burning a dodge if you're a hunter. The root of the issue is that a lot of people, maybe even including yourself, you're viewing this as defensive. It's not defensive. If your barricade is dropped because you're in critical health, that's on you. You need to think of this helmet the exact same way you think about the site and ramparts. Every lane that you get into, every spot, every choke point, the barricade needs to be on the ground. You should be abusing the 20% more damage. It's free damage. Two tap DMTs, one shot Ariana's Vow, two tap Thorn, two tap Ace of Spades, Desperado Messenger, Kill Clip Messenger, whatever it is. Play the Sunspot playstyle, go from Sunspot to Sunspot, use the barricade as cover, and be around it. Get up your other abilities with Sun Warrior. You're not waiting to drop this thing defensively. You're going to if it's there. But if you're dropping it defensively only, you're missing the point. A lot of times my barricades just loop anyway in the area that I'm in. Because when you do use it offensively, it creates something between you and your enemy. It stops a push. Worst case scenario, you make them burn a grenade, a vortex, and all you do is just move out of the way. You still have the damage because you gave yourself Sun Warrior. And even if you were critically wounded, it's back in no time. Not a big deal. Again, faster than Hunter Dodge. Mindset. Losing that barricade's fine, because if you use the strength, use it active and often, not reactively, you'll see it. It's so powerful to be able to two-tap with those things, body shot with snipers, whatever it is, on demand, on your terms, being mobile, being control of it. And if I get popped in critical health, I'm okay with that trade-off. Because if I can be dominant with an on-demand sunspot, and you've seen some of the things that I've done, if I can be in control of that, I'm okay with waiting 12 seconds until I can just go do it again. And that's only if I'm caught in critical health. Usually that's my fault, because the barricade should have been on the ground in the first place, so I can abuse that damage. 
It's not the end of the world to lose that barricade. Don't think of it defensively, it's pure offense. Think of it like the Sight and Ramparts. As far as PvE, real quick, you can get sunspots on your own now. No more throwing a grenade, melee, running over to the enemy that you killed. You just pop the barricade at your feet, start the sunspot chain, get it going. Still great with war mine cells, and all of this, including PvP, is gonna get better with Solar 3.0. Wake up. I have no idea what you've seen or how this thing just spiraled down to getting constantly bashed. It's not true. Use this thing early and often. That's how it's meant to be played. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about this rework down below. Pick it back up again if you haven't used it. Try it again with something powerful. Use it early and often. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.